Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with another fan TV. Back at you another video. If the content is video, go ahead and smash that like button, man. Also, man, comment down below who you got one in the Super Bowl. Also, comment your thoughts about this video, man. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, all right? So today we're going to talk about, uh, like, I, like I titled the video, okay? The Ravens' best friend, the cap casualty wide receiver. Who are the options that's out there for the Ravens? Now, listen, man, I'm not going to say all these guys are sexy names. They're at the top of the line, top of the list. But we know the Ravens. We know their history. We know how they get down. So I want to give... I want to give some realistic options that the Ravens could be looking into. All right, that, that's what this is about, okay? So let's get it started. First off, why? All right, one, it wouldn't cost a draft pick. Ravens only got five this year, and we know how the Ravens like to hoard draft picks. We know how the Ravens feel about draft picks in general, okay? We know that, all right? Second reason is cheaper. You know, the NFL, your lifespan, if you're a good player or a decent player, you get you, you probably can get three contracts, okay? Your first contract is your rookie deal. Your second contract is your big one, you know, if you, if you, if you earn that kind of deal. Your big and play the contract. Your third one, you know, you might just be trying to get on a team, all right? So the Ravens will be talking guys on those third contracts or beyond, and that's the kind of guys we're looking at, all right? Now, uh, the third reason is history. And let's talk about the history a little bit. Derek Mason, Cap Calgity from the Titans. He uh, turned out to be pretty good. Steve, Steve Smith, same thing, Panthers. And Quan Bowen, I'm throwing him in the list, even though I believe he was a trade. But it's, just, it's the same purpose, all right? He was brought here for that reason, all right? And he flourished here. It didn't all work out, though. All right, there was guys like Michael Crabtree, who was a cap casualty wide receiver from the, uh, I think it might have been the Raiders at that time, and he came here and it didn't work out. So it doesn't always work out, but I just want to tell you why the Raiders might be looking to go down this route. All right, we got three different categories we got the safe, we got the upside, and we got the well done options. I'm going to give you two guys for each category, and that's how we're going to rock out with it. All right, so look, man, first of all, in the safe category, Corey Davis, wide receiver, New York Jets. All right. 6'3", 210, 28 years old. This past season had 32 catches, 536 yards, two touchdowns, all right? Um, he's a big physical receiver. I remember when he was on the Titans and we played him. Um, you know, he had some good games with the Ravens. He did, he did all right. You know, a Titans team ran a lot of play action, got him open over the middle of the field, and he caught the ball strong, you know? And him and A.J. Brown were a uh, headache to deal with. And now in New York, it hasn't necessarily worked all the way out for him like that. Um... But you know, that's what it is. Quarterback play. They've drafted young talent. They obviously got a guy like Garrett Wilson out there. And they could be looking to move on from him and maybe even get younger at wide receiver, okay? So, Corey Davis is an option. He's safe. He's reliable. Um, also, he's a good blocker. I know we don't want to hear that about our wide receivers. And I know that. But you know the Ravens care about that kind of stuff. Even no matter who the offensive coordinator is, they're going to care about the fact that you try on the outside to block somebody. And that's why Corey Davis is on this list, all right? That's the safe option number one. Safe option number two is Robert Woods, okay? 30 years old, 6 foot, 195. Last season, this past season, 53 catches, 527, two touchdowns. Now, look, he was in a heavy, heavy run first offense at Tennessee with poor quarterback play. Ryan Tannehill fell off a cliff. Malik Willis, they wouldn't even let him throw the ball certain games when he was in there. So, you know, when he was playing, it was almost like they had no QB. And that's just because he was a rookie, they didn't trust him, all right? And we'll see what happens with Malik Willis' career going forward. But when you have a game like that, that's going to affect the wide receiver's numbers. And that's just what happened to Robert Woods. I still believe Robert Woods is a, a guy who's a savvy route runner and knows how to get open. Now, it kind of reminds me of a sign that I mentioned earlier, uh, a Derek Mason. Now, now, when I say that, not in terms of career. Obviously, Derek Mason was a way better player. Um, really, Derek Mason had a really, really great career. You know what I mean? Probably borderline Hall of Fame kind of career, okay? But in terms of play style. Uh, veteran wide receiver, knows how to get open, good route runner in the short to intermediate kinds of area, and a guy that's going to uh, be a quarterback's best friend because he's going to be good hands, reliable target, guy that they can count on to catch the football and get open. And we remember early years of Joe Flacco, uh, Derek Mason on the curl route, Derek Mason on the out route, Derek Mason on the slant route, killer. And he ran those routes repeatedly and was seemingly always open. All right, so you know, if, if my older Ravens fans remember that, you know, let, let me know. All right. Now, we're going to move on to the upside category. Now, obviously, upside is a little different in this term because these are older players. But upside can mean like they didn't have the greatest year last year, but they get in a new situation where they're more of a, I guess, a high focal point. They could have an explosive season, right? Maybe not a pro bowler, but a high level starter to, you know, really, really good contributor. All right. Now, first guy I want to mention is, is Robbie Anderson, right? This was a guy that Ravens fans were talking about at the trade deadline this past season. 29 years old, 6'3", 190. 
This past season, he had 20 catches, 282, one touchdown. But he only started seven games, and he only started two games after he was traded to Arizona. All right, so it didn't really work out for him. But last year, week one versus Cleveland, five catches, 102, and a touchdown. He's still showing that he could be that explosive element. Now, the major, major drawback of Robbie Anderson is, and while I have a hard time possibly seeing this one happen, is the attitude, right? We know how John Harbaugh runs his camp. We know how he runs his ship. It's the same reason why a guy like George Pickens, who could have been a Ravens draft pick, is not here, right? Um, we saw Robbie Anderson blow up at his, I believe his wide receiver coach. I can't, remember the, I can't remember the guy's name, but he blew up at his wide receiver coach, which expedited his trade to, uh, to the Cardinals. And, um, yeah, man, and the Ravens probably didn't want to touch him after that. But, 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 he is friends with Lamar Jackson. They know each other. Lamar Jackson can put in a word for him if he so feels on the to. Also, he's a field stretcher. And the Ravens need speed. They need dynamic players who can get down the field. And Robbie Anderson can still do that. He, he can still run past uh, most safeties, most DBs in the NFL. He's that fast. So I would still like to see a Robbie Anderson. All right. Um, second guy, Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, man. Uh, 30 years old, 6'3", 220, uh, 31 catches, 5, 39, 3 touchdowns. Um, 17 yards a catch last year. 17 yards a catch. So that's obviously big plays. Um in 13 games. We know if y'all watched the game week three this past season, he killed the Ravens. Uh five catches, 156 yards. Okay. Um, absolutely killed the Ravens. Now obviously Ravens came out with that W, but Devontae Parker showed that he still got it. He still got something in there, right? He's had thousand yard seasons before. Um, it just never really fully came together for him. And obviously the the uh, concern with him, excuse me, is the injuries. You know, that's something that we gotta talk about. Um he is off injured, you know. But if that's not uh, a major concern for you for the Ravens. He's a big jump ball wide receiver that we've all been talking about. He's still an athletic freak, and I don't see that change in next season. I don't. So, Devontae Parker would be interested. Now, the third and the last option is, is the well-known names, you know, guys that we heard of, and I'm going to give you two names right here, all right? First one, Michael Thomas, man. Saints. Yes, the Saints very well could cut Michael Thomas. I think it will save him about $12 million in cap space for a guy who hasn't really played the last couple years, right? He's been notoriously injured. So, Michael Thomas, let's, let's just give it a rundown. 29, 6'3", 212. In the three games he played this season, he had 16 catches, 171, three touchdowns. Now, let's go game by game. Week one, five catches, 57 yards, two TDs. Week two, six catches, 65 yards, one TD. Week three, five catches, 49 yards, no touchdowns. Listen, he's hurt a lot. But when he played this year, he was good. He looked like Michael Thomas. Now, the Ravens have to decide whether or not that's worth the risk to, to bring in a guy like that. But you have to imagine that his number would be lower than what the Saints were paying him just because he's going to have to kind of prove that he's still that guy. Right? Now, if the Ravens were to make a move like this, um, Michael Thomas is a good route runner. He excels short to intermediate. He's definitely, like I said about Robert Woods, Michael Thomas is definitely going to be a quarterback's best friend. Um, he gets you slants, in routes, or anything you want underneath, he got you. He's strong, he's reliable, um, he's physical at the wide receiver position, plays with a real attitude, right? Um, and like I said, when he played this year, he still looked like Michael Thomas. He still looked like, looked like that guy. So if he can stay healthy, who knows? Maybe it'd be worth it, right? <laughs> All right. Now, um, last guy. I mentioned him in a YouTube short before, so if y'all watched that, you know, you know, Keenan Allen, right? 30 years old, will be 31 when the season starts. Uh, next year, uh, 6'2", 211. Uh, this year has 66 catches, 752 yards, and four touchdowns. Now, Keenan Allen is a guy where people want to say uh, worry about the injuries, right? Uh, to me, I'm not too concerned about that. Since 2017, he's played 88 of 98 regular season games. Uh, this past season was the most he's missing in almost like four years. So he's, you know, but let's just say that, right? He missed a lot of games this past year. But when he came back, uh, I got two games highlighted right here. Week 16 versus the Colts, 11 catches, 104. Week 18 versus the Broncos, 8 catches, 102, two touchdowns. So when he came back from an injury, he looked like Keenan Allen still. And this guy is still a top five route runner in the NFL. I don't care what anybody says. He runs some of the greatest, crispest, cleanest routes you will see on your NFL on NFL Sundays. That's what Keenan Allen does. And really the guy who knows how to get open. And that's one thing Keenan Allen does. He gets open, notoriously. So, um, those are the guys. It's not exactly a sexy list of names, but I want to be realistic with you, man. I'm not going to say the Ravens are going to trade for DeAndre Hawkins, trade for uh, uh, Mike Evans, you know. These are moves that I would love to see, 
but we know the team we root for, man. We know how they operate, we know how they think. Um, I think some of these moves are more likely to happen. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments, man. We'll talk about it there. And uh, yeah, it's your boy Gabriel, the Fan TV. I'm out.